Hey there, folks. Welcome back for day three of the 30 Days of Banjo. What you just heard is what we're going to learn today. It's a combination of the pinch patterns from yesterday and the melody of Boil That Cabbage Down. And if you can do those things separately, then it's actually not that difficult to combine them. Really, all you have to do is play what you already know from Boil That Cabbage Down, just that simple melody, all with your index finger, and then you're just adding in those pinches in between. So, for instance, that first measure, one, two, three, four, becomes... One, two, three, four. Great, not so bad. The next measure is not so different. You're gonna do the exact same thing with the right hand. One, two, three, four. You're gonna put your index finger on the first fret, just like you would for Boil That Cabbage Down as you've been practicing, but you're gonna do one new thing. You're gonna take your ring finger and put it on the second fret. I know that seems strange. Why wouldn't you just use the middle finger? But for reasons that you'll see later on in this series, we're gonna use the ring finger. Then you just do the same thing. Easy. Then go back to that first measure again. Then we go to our next position, like we do in Boil That Cabbage Down, which is the middle finger on the second fret of the third string, and so on. It's the same as everything we've already been doing, just combining them. So here's a close-up look at what that looks and sounds like. Now, this is the first time that we're actually putting together a couple ideas, and that can make things a little bit more complicated. I'm sure that intellectually, you probably understand what it is that you're supposed to do today. You're supposed to play the melody of Boil That Cabbage Down and just include pinches. Of course, when you do this note, you add in your ring finger. Great, I'm sure none of that is super confusing to you. However, in practice, I think you probably have to do a little more practicing than that. And the way that that's gonna be really productive is if you do it slowly and methodically. I'm sure you could just play it quickly. I'm sure you could go through it that way, and I'm sure some of you will. However, you will be best served if you go cleanly and evenly through the entire piece at the same speed, even if that means playing really, really slowly. That's no problem, so it would just be like this. And so on. This is also really good practice for the rest of this series because this is all the type of practicing that's going to help you learn much more complicated music. When I play much more complicated music, if I can't play it all cleanly and evenly at the same speed, then I know I'm doing something wrong. So I need to slow it all down so that it's all played together. Now, your homework for today is just to play through this example. You should probably practice the pinching patterns on their own, but I don't think you really need to go back and play the melody for Boil That Cabbage Down on its own again. Some of this stuff we can leave behind us. So practice those pinching patterns on their own and this new pinching pattern arrangement of Boil That Cabbage Down. And again, in terms of practicing, it might be really helpful for you to just count along with yourself like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Another thing that I'm gonna strongly recommend that you do when you practice is use a metronome. If you don't know what that is, it's just a device that keeps time at regular intervals. It's gonna help you keep better timing. It's just a practice tool. And so here's what a metronome sounds like. You can get one on your phone or you can get the device on its own. But if I play this metronome, metronome on my phone is called Time Guru. Pro Metronome is another good one. Mine sounds like this. 
So if I want to practice with a metronome, here's how that's going to work. I'm going to set it to something simple like 100 beats per minute, and then each one of those clicks that the metronome makes is one beat. So when I'm counting along, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's pretty simple. And if you focus, then it's going to help you stay in time. But you might not be able to do that yet, and that's okay. What you probably want to do to begin with is just turn on the metronome and see if you can clap along or snap along or something like that just to stay in time. Then maybe you just want to play one note. Right? Then maybe you want to do something like play that example of the melody of Boil That Cabbage Down. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the more comfortable you get with that idea, the easier it's going to be to play along with it. It's kind of the same as planting on the head of the banjo or using finger picks. It's something that if you do it, it becomes easier. Aside from that, all you need to do is check out some of the links in the description, like for instance, to the playlist for listening examples of Don Reno. That's the featured banjo player for today. Don Reno, as I said yesterday, is one of the big three, Earl Scruggs, Ralph Stanley, and Don Reno, and he pioneered a special style of banjo playing called single string, which sounds a little bit like this. This is just one of the ways that banjo players have been able to play melodies like a fiddle player or like a guitar player, and Don Reno is generally acknowledged to be the pioneer of this particular style, although he plays a lot of material similar to Earl Scruggs as well. So as you listen, make some more mental notes about the differences that you hear. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Make sure you check out the PDF in the description below for all the tablature for this entire series. And if you don't mind, do me a favor and subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's a huge thing that you can do to help me make more of these videos. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the fourth day of 30 Days of Banjo.